Hi there, Sam here. Uh, today I'm doing a video in regards to POCD compulsions. Now I've suffered with POCD. Um, I know the feeling of the, that chronic guilt, um, that constant latched on, uh, you can't be let off the hook, can't have a single minute's peace. Um, you're the worst, undeserving, um, terrible, awful person in the world. All the stuff that, OC that POCD can throw at you. Um, well, what OCD can throw at you, but especially when you're suffering with POCD. Um, I, I know the suffering. And it's mainly why I want to do that video, really. Uh, just something that, that POCD sufferers can relate to. Uh, to really know you're not alone. Um, and it's a, it's a very common theme. Um, and just trying to raise awareness um, and, and to help people out, really. Um, so, so I can give sort of my knowledge and, and, like I said, help you out. So, first of all, so one of my biggest POCD convulsions was avoidance. Now, I, I avoided so much, avoided pretty much everything that I could possibly trigger. Any place, any event, any person, any family member anything we could be possibly triggered so for example as a place um let's say going swimming anything like that that would that would trigger me completely so the point where i wouldn't leave the house uh going to a beach if i was on holiday i'd say i won't go i won't go to the beach i wouldn't go to someone's house uh wouldn't walk through a park wouldn't walk through anything that, that i could be remotely triggered so more you avoid there you can see that that is avoidance there so the more you avoid your, your the box that you live in with ocd gets smaller and smaller smaller in the end it'll just leave you completely housebound um it, it, like i said you wouldn't you wouldn't leave your house um because you would it would think of something else to avoid avoid that avoid this um so yeah that can get triggered at any of those places um, I remember avoiding family members for years. Quite sad, really, when I look back. Some of the stuff that I've avoided, I haven't seen people for for years, just just solely because of that. Um, just I was that scared uh, of a fall, of an urge, anything, um, and just scared of of because I had this fall that makes me the worst person in the world. Um, before I even knew what OCD was, I was that scared. Um, and. Uh, next thing, another thing with avoidance is like TV shows and films. I didn't go to the cinema for years. I hardly watched any movies, any films, and just being that scared of being triggered. One thing could trigger you, and that's it. Uh, panic, guilt, um, anxious, just couldn't focus, couldn't concentrate, just that scared. Uh, TV shows, the same thing, um, easily triggered. Um, I, I can't believe when I was when I was making this video how much I used to avoid uh, pretty much anything that, that you could possibly trigger that with PUCD. Um, and now I just I just watch films, watch TV shows. It doesn't even bother me now. Whatever thought might come in, it, it I just it doesn't bother me at all. Um, just it's OCD. Just carry on, and then it's gone. It loses all intrusiveness um, once you take the fear out. Um, just on that, I've done a few videos on unconditional acceptance as well, disputing irrational beliefs. So leaving the thought there is crucial, but obviously that it takes more work as well. But the first thing you need to do is cut out all compulsions. Um, and stuff like this, avoidance, cut out all avoidance like this. Um, another part of avoidance for me was sexual intimacy. So having, having sex with my partner, I'd, I'd avoid that for months um, because I'd be scared of a thought at a specific time um, or just, just not being able to enjoy it, or not being able to concentrate because mine would be racing with thoughts and then be chronic guilt, um, just took all enjoyment out of anything like that. Um, so, so yeah, that is another part of avoidance. Um, so yeah, like like I've said, that just needs it just needs to stop. Um, any avoidance, it, you got to look at avoidance as, as like a drug. Um, so as soon as you avoid, as soon as you participate in avoidance, you're you're igniting the fear. You're, you're just you're just pouring fuel on the fire, really. Um, so yeah, you might be scared. Um, however, if you're avoiding, it's just going to heighten that that fear. It's it's going to make it more scary. Um, so you need to stop cutting out all these compulsions. Stop avoiding. Um, and then gradually, yes, it might be just uncomfortable, you might feel very anxious, very, like I said, uncomfortable. However, um, you, that's going to lower over time, thoughts through their intrusiveness, um, when you expose yourself to the fears um, and, and just and stop all avoidance. Okay, next compulsion I'd like to talk about is reassurance. <sighs> the amount of reassurance I used to ask uh, my, my poor girlfriend every evening, every day, just asking for reassurance constantly. Uh, does this make me a bad person? Am I the last person to ever do this? Am I this? Am I that? What does this mean? What does that mean? Oh, just, just that. It's, it's like it's an addiction. Um, it's for that temporary relief. Um, and then 
would give it 10 minutes, give it an hour, give it a day, and you're, you're chasing, you're, you're down that path of reassurance again, you're, you're seeking relief, and you're chasing, you're chasing a feeling of, of comfort, of certainty, um, and, and yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's a reassurance, and I've, I've had to just cut that out, sort of, just straight, straight away, um, just, I remember with Amy, my partner, I've done a video with Amy on here, it's just tough love, um, so, uh, as soon as any bit of reassurance just tell me to shut up simple as that and then that's so i might that, that might sound quite harsh quite cruel and it can seem like that to my poor girlfriend when i'm when i'm in tears when i'm when i'm i'm in i'm panicking i can't sleep come home from work and i'm just in floods i i, I need i need so i'm in i'm in extreme discomfort but is that tough love look i'm not going to give you reassurance 10 minutes later you'll be asking me another question um so that just all needs to cut out um and then that's helped me help me to get to where i am today so knowing that you've got you've got to sit with that discomfort i'm, I'm not giving an end to end to your reassurance not just your partner anyone that you may live with your therapist you've got to look at yourself as well some of the stuff you're asking yourself is that a reassurance question um which it most probably is with ocd so it just needs to cut out um it, it really doesn't get you anywhere no one i've known has ever recovered from reassurance um, I, it'd be amazing but it's just not possible because ocd is always going to move the boundaries always going to move the goalposts and find something else all right so reassurance is a, is a is a trap it's a dead end okay next thing similar to reassurance is confession now confession I, I was even worse at confession than reassurance that was pretty much every day every night every weekend every holiday i'd confess some confess a thought i had at a specific time confess a false memory confess a, a real event confess anything that would come in that, that ocd would latch on to um any pocd like i said intrusive thought i'd have to confess i'd have to say look oh my god i've had this i've had that what does this say about me? What does this mean? A partner would just say, look, please just stop confessing. Um, it is, can you not see you're going around in circles? OCD is moving the goalposts, is moving the boundaries, um, and it's just going to send you down an endless path um, to nowhere. That is, that, that is not where freedom is, I'm afraid. Freedom is the unconditional acceptance route, the, the moving towards cutting out compulsions and moving towards exposures, um, the facing your fears disputing beliefs um c confession will really get you nowhere um yeah that, that is confession uh, another compulsion i like to talk about is neutralizing the fault now i can really go back and remember this from a young age so I, i've had suffered with intrusive thoughts from ever since i can sort of well 11 12 13 14 sort of I remember being at school with bombarded by intrusive thoughts um and I'd I'd sort of shout things or or, or to neutralise the thought. I I'd, I'd say something neutral or say something completely different just to try and take that thought away from me. Um, is is a form of is a compulsion? Is a form of reassurance? Um, you you're, you're trying to think of something else. You you you're not just leaving the thought there. You're trying to get rid of the thought. You're trying to chase the feeling. You're trying to chase the certainty of getting that thought out of my mind. Um, so yeah, that's that's one I can remember. Similar as I used to sing. I remember this because I've been walking to school a few times when I was about was probably 12, 13. And I was just, I'd get bad fault and I'd, I'd sing. So I'd, I'd sing song lyrics. Uh, it's just to take my mind off it, just sing something, just sing a random song out, out loud. Maybe people might think I was an absolute lunatic walking past. <laughs> so just singing, but it was just I was bombarded by thoughts. Um, and then that was a way of me finding relief. A distraction um, to take away from my brain, constantly hammering me with faults. Um, and yeah, like I said, it goes back to a little while. Um, and yeah, like, ever since I remember when I was going, walking to school, that was happening. Um, and now with the intrusiveness, it, it's lost all intrusiveness. So if I had a fault, like if I had any fault, PACD fault, false memory, real event, anything that's guilt related fault, I would just let it be there. Um, well, there we are. There you are. Hello, OCD. How are you doing today? Sort of thing. Not trying to constantly get rid of it. Not trying to think of something neutral. Trying to think of something different. It's, it's, it's a form of confession reassurance. You're, 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 it's a dead end. Um, it's, it's, it's an endless path um, to nowhere. And it's going to think it's going to track in another fault, another fault, another fault. And then if you're constantly trying to neutralize it, you're really not going to show the brain that, that, that you're, going to, you're showing your brain you're scared. You've got to think of something else. You can't possibly that thought kind of possibly come in um so is going to love that 
it's going to target that like a missile. It's going to go, okay, he doesn't like that. Boom, boom, boom. There's some more thoughts for you. <laughs> so OCD really doesn't care. Um, he's got no boundaries. So neutralizing the thought is going to, going to do absolutely nothing. Um, and like I said, I've got thinking of something different, something something neutral, something good, um, something that you, that you that you that you want to think about. Um, but I mean, if you if I said um, think of a pink elephant or think of a think of a flying pig, that's what I'd be saying to myself. Just go think of something else. Please, just think of something neutral, other than whatever OCD was chucking in. Okay, so that that all needs to cut out. However tough that might be. However anxiety provoking that might be, however dis however uncomfortable that might be, it, it it just needs to stop. I'm afraid, I mean, it's really not going to get you anywhere. Uh, next compulsion is rumination, a quite painful rumination, going round and round in your head, analysing the thought. What does that mean? What does this mean? When did that thought come in? What was I thinking at the time? What was I doing at the time? When did that come in? The prompts are analysing. What does that mean? Wow, looking back now, is I'm having headaches, um, and just I was exhausted by nine a.m. Um, just before I even got into work, I'd be exhausted just by thoughts of just oh my god, just just analysing what does this mean, what does that mean? Okay, and the scanning, scanning the past. Um, as soon as I wake up, scanning for something like a false memory, scanning for a real event, scanning for a thought I might have forgotten about. What? Yeah, just that constant analysing in your head. All right, I know how tough that is. I know how automatic it feels. That just needs to stop. Well, I, when I say stop, I, obviously you can't, if you're in the rumination cycle, you can't just go, all right, I'm going to stop, and then that's it, done. You need to just not engage. Um, so just carry on with your life as usual. Carry on whatever you're doing. Just don't engage in that cycle. Don't engage in that rumination fight. As soon as you do that, OCD knows OCD's got you then. And so, like I said, it's gonna it's gonna provoke anxiety. It's gonna feel unnatural. It's gonna feel like an extreme sport if you look at it like that. Um, it's gonna it's gonna feel like a, a leap of faith. Uh, it's gonna take risks and just go. Look, I'm just gonna not gonna engage in it today. Whatever OCD is gonna an analyze, whatever OCD is gonna chuck in, I'm not gonna take part. I'm not gonna participate in it. Okay, and if you're doing that, you're taking massive strides towards recovery and towards freedom. Okay. And um, replaying false memories, replaying real events. Wow, I've spent hours, just days, week, years, just replaying from different angles. It was like a game, just re. From the, oh, might have found some some temporary relief. Might have found the answer. Might have found a solution. However, Rosie is laughing. He's gonna he's gonna think of something else. He's gonna think of another angle. Oh, how old were you here? Or oh, are you sure that's true? Or oh, remember this. Remember that. Or or he's gonna think of any other angle that he can possibly get you on. He's not gonna care if you if you find. Oh, I've, I found the I found the answer. I finally found what I was looking for. Nope, it's going to think of something else. Complete comment a different, complete, di completely different angle that you haven't thought of before. Okay, so he's got he's got all tricks in the book, and um, it's just becoming wise to those tricks that he's going to throw in, um, and just s stop replaying, stop engaging in that rumination cycle. Um, it's a fight. Is it? Is a chase to nowhere. Um, it's tough. Of course, it's tough. It's not an overnight fix, but the best you can do now. If you're reading this, sorry, if you're watching this video now and you're in that rumination cycle every day, every morning, every evening, um, just know, try not to engage, okay? Try and go, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to carry on with what I'm doing. Or however distracting it might be, however it might take away your attention, just try and carry on. Just try and focus on, on, on whatever your plans are on that day. If you're at work, just try and carry on with work. Don't go and run off crying or run off panicking. Just try and carry on with it going on in the background. That's the first step you can do. And then if you if you go over towards the unconditional acceptance, the disputing, the, the exposures, then the fears will lower. Um, and then you, you're just, it, my mind doesn't ruminate. And it, sometimes I feel myself going into that rumination trap. Um, but I'm, I'm, I can soon get myself out of it uh, with the tools that I've got. Um, but yeah, that that's the first that's the first stride you can take towards recovery. Um, yeah, it is like I said, it's, it's scanning the past. I, I've mentioned that. But yeah, as soon as I wake up in the morning. My mind will just be scanning. What what can I find now? And then boom, um, within a minute, within two minutes, it, it's found something else. Um, and it's just it's just that never ending. Um, it's really 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 quite difficult, really challenging. Um, but there's there's huge hope. There's there's definitely a way forward. Um, I've I've been in your shoes. You watching this video? I've been in your shoes. I know exactly how you feel. 
Um, you've just got to just you've got to put in the work and you've got to some, listen to some of the, the advice on this channel, um, the, the books, and they're putting it all in. And then you know there are there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is freedom and waiting on the other end. Okay, you don't you don't need to wake up and you don't need to find the answer. You don't need to find work everything out. You don't need to figure everything out right now, right this second. You, that, that's the trap that OCD sends you down with PCD. Th this intrusive thought, you need to find out what does that mean? What does this mean? Um, OCD is going to trap you in. Um, you probably fall for it with, oh my God, I've got to work it out. I've got to work it out now. I've got to stop whatever I'm doing and work it out now. No, that's the last thing you do. You can just crack on with your day um, and then just use the tools to help yourself get better. All right. Uh, another compulsion is constant checking feelings, constant checking thoughts, something like growing all responses. Um, so if you, if you, let's say um, I sat in now and go, I really wouldn't want an itch on my foot. Well, I'm more than likely to get an itch on my foot. Well, there we go. <laughs> I'm more than likely to get an itch on my foot. Same as PCD, same as any OCD with the growing response. Um, I really want that to happen. Then more than likely it's going to happen. So you've got to remember the OCD is in the, is in the control room. It's hijacked all feelings. Um, it's it's going to make it feel as real as it possibly can. It's going to convince you that it's real. It's going to convince you that this time's different. Okay, so you've got to remember that the OCD is there. OCD is hijacked the, the feelings. Um, so the same again. Just don't engage with that cycle. Don't don't um don't fall into that that um rumination trap or what does that mean what does that make about me um it's all parts of ocd's trickery okay um it's very very tough i know especially if you don't know what ocd is but hopefully you're on this channel you understand what ocd is and, and what you'll you, you get you're gaining knowledge on ocd so please don't it's very i know it's panicking um that that had me in a, in a spiral that but it can it, it gets better once you know how to deal with it and just not engage with it let it be there and um, don't don't let it overwhelm you um however however uncomfortable it might be however panicked you may feel just know it's in, in the in the in the um in the control room there okay so that's mainly my um video on pocd compulsions i think i've what i've listed six there um avoidance is, is the massive one when i said at the start anything you can avoid so i'm not going to list absolutely everything that can be avoided it's just you, you there's just lots of parts of avoidance so all that needs to stop uh, but yeah there, there's six compulsions there um and i just want to end this video on hope okay so i know psd is a very common theme it what keeps a lot of people stuck i'm not um i'm not um, talking down to any of the themes, if you wish. I, I, all themes are, are can be as challenging and difficult as, as others, but my personal experience with PUCD and, and and the suffering that I've been through with it, and the the, um, the, the, the panic, the, the guilt, not the, the guilt, constant guilt latched on. You can't enjoy a minute's peace twenty four seven. If only they knew. Constant thoughts like that in your head. Um, I, I can't enjoy this, or I can't enjoy a moment because of this, because of PUCD fault, PUCD false memory, PUCD real event, whatever it could be. Um, I, I know, I know exactly how you feel. However, you feel watching this video. Um, okay, so I, I've been in your shoes. I've I've been there, and with the work, you really can get better. So, like I said, I want to finish this video with hope. Okay, there's there's hope. Um, believe it or not, OCD. Um. It's, I, I look at OCD as a blessing in disguise. Okay, so that might sound absolutely crazy when you're suffering. However, the tools, they're empowering the, the tools that you learn for OCD. Um, the unconditional acceptance, um, the, the disputing irrational beliefs, the facing your fears, the, the bringing it for the ride, the living with the discomfort, all these frustrations and difficulties and challenges you'll face in your life um, it is all going to bring... Uh, it, is helping you in the future okay i know when you're in the moment when you're caught up in that suffering that rumination cycle i know you're the last thing you think god I, how is this a blessing in disguise but putting the work in and it is i'm giving you that hope like i've said a million times i've been there i've been in your shoes i want to give you that hope okay uh, awareness is out there help is out there okay so please don't feel um you're alone um that's the main thing with PUCD for me i felt so alone um, I felt so isolated. I felt I could not talk about anyone. I talk about it with anyone. I just, I was so scared. I was so stuck up in my home, in my own head. I think I can possibly tell anyone. Um, it, I'm a monster. Some of these thoughts I was having, or stuff that it was latching onto. Um, I just, I just couldn't possibly 
see how I could possibly live with myself with, with, with and that how PhD made me feel. Um but yeah there is there is light in the tunnel, there is hope. Okay, you're really, really not alone, you're really not. Um this is a is a, a community. Um, um lots of people understand it, especially if you if you've been for it, you understand um that that there is definitely help out there. Okay, so I'll probably end it with that before I ramble on and, and talk a load of rubbish at the end. <laughs> um, so I'll leave it there. Um, please, if you if you like the video, please drop a like. I'd appreciate that. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, there's some brilliant content on there. Really, it helps me. Some of the content on this channel, really, really helpful advice from from Nick, um, from Momin, from Jade, um, Rob. Lots of brilliant advice. Um, leave a comment if if you wish. Um, if if you can relate, if if you can, if you've got any questions, if you've got any um any anything you want to say, um, just yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate any sort of a, um feedback. That'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you. I will do some more videos on the channel. Um, but yeah, like I said, you take care. Bye bye.